Well, hey there, pro traders, and welcome to our Monday Market Review here at GoPro Trading Academy, uh, being held by yours truly, Ian Giffen. And uh, one thing I can say about last week is that it was really a great week and also an excellent week for me to be able to illustrate how critical it is for you to always ensure that you only trade markets where the conditions are appropriate for the strategy. So that being said, folks, um, we've got some big news coming up shortly about uh, a new strategy that we've been developing over the last year, uh, as well as some updates on uh, existing strategies such as the overlay. Uh, so please make sure that if you're not already subscribed to our channel, uh, that you do so now and hit that notifications bell so that when we do bring out our uh, big announcement about uh, this, uh, the, the new strategies that we've developed and all of the results that we'll be able to show you on that, uh, that you get notified of that immediately. And as always, folks, if you're enjoying the material that we put out, please don't hesitate to hit that like button. All right, so uh, that being said, let's have a look at what happened uh, last week. What I'm going to do today as well is uh, use uh, an evaluation account of one of our members. Uh, so you can see what trades they took. It was not all the trades that were on the table and they focused uh, very much on just the H4 impulse. Uh, but this trader has uh, been going for, well, I think it's, uh, it's less than two months, and uh, they've almost passed the first stage of their evaluation account. So um, well done for that. You know who you are. Uh, but let's have a look, and uh, I'll show you some of their trades as well, uh, and the one that's still on the table at the moment. So starting as always with the euro US dollar here on the weekly time frame. Uh, one thing that has happened here is uh, with last week's bearish impulse candle, uh, ringing that previous high, we've uh, had to roll back our analysis on this one slightly, which is great because it really makes a lot more sense like this. Uh, with the market definitely trending now on the weekly time frame, uh, that trend being confirmed really with this, uh, not only the bearish breakout, but the fact that what was a support turned resistance level has been respected as resistance. Uh, and uh, the market has rolled over nicely with the preceding week's uh, test of that resistance level failing to break through. So pretty much picture perfect for a price action trader to establish that we are in a bearish market overall here on this time frame. Uh, so if you were looking to trade uh, a, uh, using this as your selection time frame, then obviously the daily impulse would be the right strategy to go for. Uh, and now that we've got that confirmation, we're looking basically for a retracement, which really looks like it is in fact happening today. Uh, and we'll be able to update this analysis on the daily time frame. Uh, normally we'd only we'd wait for the end of the day to do that. Uh, but looking at something like that, showing that we are in fact in that retracement wave, nothing else is going to change with our channels really. Um, so, uh, and what's, what's useful of this, uh, with this of course, is that as soon as we get a bearish resumption, uh, that obviously with the, the impulse candle is a signal to short this market for a daily impulse. So those of you who've done the, the training on the daily impulse, you'll know all about that. So pretty straightforward. Otherwise, there's nothing doing uh, at the moment on this one for us. So let's move on. Uh, cable, uh, next here again on the weekly time frame, we, we know that this is also a bearish trend. We've got bearish cyclicity intact on this one. We had it the preceding week already, so it's a week ahead of the euro. Uh, but what it also did, as we know, is that um, it's shown a bit of weakness in the past. It's back outside the HTC channel, so we, we are happy with that. If you don't insist on all of those boxes being ticked, including an outside C close, uh, then this market's fine uh, to trade once again also uh, from the point of view of a, a daily impulse. And uh, we are in a trade here already. I think this was the hybrid we discussed uh, a week ago. Uh, we've survived all the pullbacks. Uh, and currently the stop, as you can see, is up here using that two five step rule. Um, but should we get a, another bearish candle today, of course, then we will be at break even on this trade. So it's uh, been on the table for quite some time, not for this trader, because as I say, they've only been trading H4 impulse, um, but certainly a, a, a nice obvious setup there for you to take relatively early on inside of the potential impulse wave on that weekly time frame, which of course is the, what we, the strategy is designed to capture the meat of an impulse wave on a higher time frame. All, based on Elliott Wave principles for those of you who are budding Elliotticians. All right, so 
Uh, that's that. If you are also uh, looking to trade this on the lower time frame, H4 impulse certainly is uh, and has been a possibility here. Uh, obviously, at the moment, nothing much really happening there, but uh, keep an eye on that. Remember, it also depends on your selection criteria. Uh, are you just a channel trader or do you also require a valid class one or class two pattern? Uh, this is only a class three pattern. So uh, folks who are leaving class three patterns often certainly, uh, if you're a pattern trader, this would not be an appropriate pair to trade. All right, so uh, dollar yen, uh, much more impulsive here on the weekly time frame. You can see even this morning, we've got a lot of action across the yen pairs again. Uh, it went to sleep a little bit last week, as we know, and, and towards the end of the preceding week. Uh, but it looks like we've got a nice continuation starting again now across our yen pairs. Obviously, as you folks know, we made a lot of money on the yen pairs over the last couple of months with that yen weakness. Uh, okay, so that's the, the, the weekly time frame. Uh, here on daily, there hasn't actually been a pullback now for, well, going on almost two weeks. In fact, that last pullback was it. So anyone who used that, uh, the resumption over here with the daily impulse, uh, has done very well. So you, uh, if you are using standard targeting, that obviously was a winner. Uh, if you're using advanced targeting, you're very much still in the running with this trade. Uh, all right, so that's talking about daily impulse. What about H4 impulse? Certainly plenty of action for us here. Uh, here's, in fact, this morning, the latest one would have hit the take profit uh, just before we had an opportunity, in fact, to get the, the trade to the stop to break even. Uh, that take profit, if you're using standard targeting, has been hit now. Uh, this morning, it failed to reach it on Friday, but that's fine. So we've had several winners in a row. Likewise, if you're using the standard targeting for a hybrid, that hybrid that we discussed a week ago, that too has now managed to hit take profit. So uh, as you know, with the hybrid strategies, the success ratio is lower, but that reward to risk ratio is much, much higher. Uh, so that's a nice one. If you're using advanced targeting with the threshold, then assuming that close looks like it was above, uh, you'd be starting to use the trailing stop now to see how much more you could get out of this. So remember, the there are a few options for that. Uh, the most aggressive, obviously, being the aggressive trailing stop, uh, but you can also use, on this time frame, the 3-6 rule. All right, so as long as you're consistent about what you do, that's all good. All right, so that's a, a, a nice one. Uh, dollar Swiss, nothing happening. I'm not going to waste time on these flat pairs. Very flat indeed. USD CAD, likewise, we haven't uh, seen anything really, I don't think, come out of this. We, uh, This is the weekly time frame. So just looking here on daily as well, yeah, nothing doing at all. It was a reversal. So uh, let me just go back to that quickly. Uh, for those of you who are um, trading the end of a phase one wave and the reversal on that, uh, you might have recognized that there's an overlay here. Uh, it's not a gamma overlay because it's um, it's not in a trending market on a higher time frame. Right. So Aussie USD, uh, we've uh, we've been looking potentially uh, for this pullback to give us a class one W pattern in the future, or uh, at the moment it's class four M pattern. Uh, if, if it's going to remain strong or weak is the question at the moment. This market is still bearish. So nothing for us to do here on this time frame at all. Uh, dropping down to daily, you can see how we had that breakout last week, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, the market did pop out above the resistance level, uh, but through the rest of last week, Wednesday, uh, up until the present, it's been pulling back quite dramatically. In fact, from Tuesday. Uh, so there was a trade in there somewhere. Okay, so this was this was a very aggressive entry with that extended setup candle. Uh, the stop was trailed, so. Not sure what they ended up losing on there, but it certainly was a lot less than the original risk. And here's also an example of an overlay, a very nice example, with the breakdown in sequentiality of cycles, the very easy bearish setup. And that one went straight to the take profit immediately. So uh, a nice overlay there. So if this trader had taken both the, uh, the, the H4 impulse over here and lost maybe 0.4 of a risk unit, they would have won over one risk unit so profitable across those two trades which is uh, the idea all right so 
Kiwi, not quite as uh, interesting. Uh, you can see how last week we've got this bearish engulfing impulse candle coming down. So that really just disqualifies everything uh, for us. And you can see here also that, that strong reversal pattern uh, on the daily time frame, so we're not really we're not doing anything there at the moment um, at all. Right, moving to our euro crosses. Here's the euro yen. Here you can see the uh, and again, you know, this is this is just today on a weekly time frame. Uh, we can see how the market remains outside of the HTC channel. No, it is not a valid class uh, for those uh, pattern class traders. Um, but as long as you're a channel trader, we are well outside of the HTC channel uh, and should be using this as, uh, well, it's a go certainly for our selection time frame. if you're using daily for execution time frame. All right, so uh, it was pretty flat last week. Here you can see this resumption today where we had a bit of a gap as well uh, after Friday's close through to uh, this morning. Uh, and um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I haven't obviously progressed this analysis. I'll only do that this evening. Uh, but if you have been waiting for the daily impulse, unfortunately, what we've got here is a class three pattern forming. Now, if you are a class three pattern trader uh, on your execution time frame, then that's fine. Then you'll be able to take a trade, assuming that this is still an impulse candle uh, later today. Um, but many of us stick to just class one or class two patterns on the execution time frame. Uh, so that's pretty much that. Nothing else really doing there. I'm not sure what was going on in the lower time frame here. See, this is a small trade. Oh, this may well have been a hybrid. Uh, looking to, to catch the bullish resumption on this. It was a little bit too soon, as you can see. And uh, I got stopped out there for a small loss on that hybrid trade. Right, uh, GBP yen. Okay, so here's a live trade running at the moment. This one's been going for a while, uh, but let's, I'll, I think it's an H4 impulse. So let's just look at the, the weekly time frame first, where similarly, you know, where we, we had that high test uh, inverted hammer uh, two weeks ago. Last week, we got a something of, of a resumption, still very much inside that uh, extended inverted hammer. Uh, but still, you know, it's a, a bullish candle closed above the preceding high. And uh, today it's looking quite promising for this to get going again. Uh, here on the daily time frame, you can see, well, last week, one, two, three, four, five, it was bullish, but nevertheless, nothing to write home about. Uh, so let's go have a quick look at what is going on with these other trades. Right, so another uh, hybrid that is still running we spoke about this um, before, so go and look at those previous recordings. Uh, this trade at break even, uh, only using potentially a trailing stop if using advanced targeting after we pass the threshold. Uh, so depending on what your threshold is, you might start trailing it nowish. Um, I know that this trade you can see is currently at break even and has been for a while. This trade I think got in here, so it's an H H4 impulse. Uh, and it's a class two H4 impulse as well. So nice class two setup. Uh, it's really languished for a long period of time, going absolutely nowhere. Uh, but because of that minimum threshold that they've got, I'm not sure what theirs is. It might be uh, half an ATR unit. Uh, it hasn't yet trailed uh, beyond break even. But if this, this, this price action continues through the course of today, um, I'm pretty sure that if we got one more uh, higher close, then the stock will be trailed, uh, start trailing to that point. So uh, let's see what they've got going over here. So as you can see, just close that down. Um, I mean, if they close this trade down now, they've actually made their six percent on, um, which is the the target for the evaluation accounts. Uh, but they don't yet have the enough days you need to have a minimum number of trading days which i think is 29 and uh they, that's that's days on which you open a trade uh, so i think they're probably getting close to that it doesn't matter um at the end of the day this is going swimmingly and it's a great example of that so yeah nice little trade going there as you can see that's the only trade that they've got on the table at the moment right so that's gbp yen uh, perfectly tradable now for H4 Impulse, but you should be in that trade already. Uh, again, another Swiss pair. Let's just have a look at weekly. First 
similar picture, even more bullish. Uh, again, we had last week's inside candle, but nevertheless, a bullish, bullish candle with today already making a higher high compared to the preceding week's high. So uh, certainly very bullish here. We've got the daily time frame uh, where we did have that breakdown in sequentiality of cyclicity. Uh, so uh, again, if you were um, looking to trade this for a daily impulse and you're happy with a class 3W pattern, then this morning you would have entered uh, right here because last week, Friday, we had an impulse candle. That was a valid signal. You could go long on that already. Uh, this was another small loser, I think, on an H4 impulse. A uh, bit of a pity. Um, and uh, depending on, again on the class patterns that you're looking for, I'm not sure why this trade is not already taking advantage, more advantage of these yen moves this morning. Uh, so you know who you are. All right, moving on to CAD yen, another picture that's very similar. Weekly time frame. Firstly, now daily time frame, almost identical to Swiss yen. So another nice trading opportunity. But we've got in at a much tighter entry this morning. Uh, with a, a small bearish gap over the weekend. Very nice tight stop. So uh, good leverage on that one. Uh, if that takes off and you're in that trade, then you're going to have a really nice one. So again, you would need to be accepting of class three uh, W patterns or class three patterns on the execution time frame. Uh, and Bob's your uncle. Next up is Aussie in weekly time frame, all looking reasonably similar. Uh, this one, we did get that daily impulse, uh, as you can see, and one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so the stop trails at the close of Friday to this point. Uh, for those folks who have taken a trade on the daily impulse on Aussie Yen. And uh, at the end of today, using that two five step rule, uh, we will be trading the stop to the lowest low of these five candles. So reduce that risk uh, quite substantially, assuming that the trade uh, is still going on. Uh, so that's a daily impulse there on Aussie Yen and on Kiwi Yen. Similar picture again on the weekly time frame uh, and another one here. So using the two five step rule, uh, similarly, we'll be trading the stock to below the low of this candle on that daily impulse. So those are the two that uh, I know that we got into on our fund. So that's all well and good. Uh, looks like they had a little... Uh, this would have been a class three setup uh, hybrid or possibly H4 impulse. Uh, you can see how at the end of the day, they use the trading stop 3-6 rule. So uh, small winner there looking for another setup to go along, I'm sure, uh, through the course of the next couple of days. But remember the conditions on the selection time frame need to be uh, correct first. Right, so let's move on to our Euro crosses, Euro GBP. I'm not going to waste time on these. We're not looking at them at all, uh, neither Euro GBP nor, nor the uh, Euro Swiss, uh, despite the fact the Euro Swiss is in fact in a uh, technical bearish trend here. It has continued to respect this resistance level. Uh, last week we had a bearish impulse candle. So, um, you know, technically that is very much. Uh, on that time frame, uh, we're in a bearish trend, and here you can see the cyclicity of that on the daily time frame. So, breakdown and bullish cyclicity, obviously, and a resumption of bearish. So, uh, there hasn't been a setup yet uh, post this ringed high for uh, a, a short daily impulse, uh, which is why there's nothing showing here. And if this continues, there's going to be a breakdown in sequentiality of cyclicity. And again, that depends. Now, what are you looking for? You're looking at class one, two, and three, or just class one and two uh, patterns on your uh, execution time frame. Uh, EuroCAD uh, here on weekly, uh, also bearish. Obviously, this is an ongoing bearish impulse wave on the weekly time frame, despite the number of bullish candles in it. Bit of a scrappy one, and you can see that here with this uh, scrappy price movement that we've got. But um, here on the, this time frame, obviously we. We did have that bearish breakout, pulled back inside of what was the channel, and then we got that bearish resumption. So um, if, if uh, being outside of that HTC channel was enough, then you should have been able to jump into a short on uh, the H4 impulse here. And you can see this trader got a nice trade there. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one.
So um, not giving me the amounts on it, but uh, I would imagine that that must have been at least two to one reward to risk ratio. That's Euro CAD, uh, Euro Aussie, likewise again on the weekly time frame. First, uh, definitely a bearish trend, established bearish trend. Uh, I was interested to note that this close didn't manage to get below the preceding waves low. So we've got the potential here for a breakdown of this bearish cyclicity, but uh, we don't know. I mean, this week could continue in a bearish direction and, and give us that lower, lower, lower close. Uh, here again on the daily time frame, uh, we've had this, uh, we had a trade on going out. First of all, this is a hybrid, a bearish hybrid that uh, is still ongoing. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So the stop, in fact, will be reflecting uh, the two five step rule, which would look more like that at the moment. So we're not yet at break even on this trade, and it's pulled back quite significantly, including over the weekend. Uh, but we don't mind. So that's that's just what it looks like. We're either going to get stopped out for a small loser, or it's going to continue now. Um, I know that some folks also treated this as a, a daily impulse. Some of you did, that's good, and you actually hit your take profit. Uh, but those folks who are trading it as a hybrid, uh, obviously some way still to go, and uh, we just be able to get our, our, uh, our stop pretty close to break even. And look, if it doesn't stop out today, we will in fact be at break even on that trade. And uh, noteworthy as well is this trader also took an H4 impulse uh, on, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me, there it is. H4 time frame. This was a really nice one. I think this was the biggest trade of the week. Uh, so, as you can see, relatively tight stop. And using that trailing stop went all the way down and got stopped out at that point over there. So, um, a very nice trade indeed. Uh, the one thing I would also say, yeah, that's using the 3 6 rule. So, it's all good. Uh, and last of the Euro crosses, Euro NZD. Nothing much, I don't think, has happened on this one. Let's just double check on that. Oh, yes. Okay. So, this one we spoke about before, we had that hybrid. It did, had got stopped out. This is one of those examples which um, uh, it's probably one of the most painful aspects of trading is that when you, you just get stopped out and then ultimately the market did go on to hit a very nice take profit. Uh, but such is life. Uh, we, we have to. Uh, deal with uh, take the rough for this week. All right, GBP Swiss weekly time frame. Nothing really going on here. One thing we can say is that the support level in our HDC channel continues to be respected. Uh, looking at the daily time frame, it did just try to break out here. The one thing that is noteworthy, folks, is that we had gaps every single morning over there. I think we did discuss this uh, a week ago. Uh, but we did not have a single close below that support level. These are all opens. All the closes were inside the channel. Uh, and that continued to be the case even this morning. So nothing of interest for us. Just uh, interesting to, to show how well the HDC channel does in fact work. Right, GBP CAD weekly time frame. Last week, we just got that doji spinning top. Uh, and if you look at the, the daily time frame. all that basically happened was that that support level continued to be respected. So we're not interested in that. Well, I should just go back to that quickly uh, because this one did survive. We, we know that we survived uh, the retracement previously. It still has it. So on our live account, we've actually got a running short on this one, uh, which I think was just a daily impulse. I'm not very much mistaken. Uh, hadn't yet hit the take profit on that. It's gotten close. Uh, but it's just languishing at the moment. So we just need to wait to see. We are at break even, so uh, nothing to lose on that at all. Uh, right, last two of the GBP crosses. Here's GBP Aussie with this low test hammer candle uh, at the end of potentially uh, a uh, this phase one impulse wave. It's already made a higher high today. So uh, assuming that the market doesn't roll over and, and end up making a lower low, giving us a bearish candle by the end of this week, uh, then this low will be ringed and it'll be the end of this bearish impulse candle on the weekly time frame. On the daily time frame, you can see how uh, we've been in uh, an extended bearish trend here. We spoke a week ago about the extended impulse wave, slight retracement and a resumption. Uh, as soon as we did get that resumption, once that high was ringed, obviously then 
On the lower time frame, we were able to look for H4 impulse trades, that being the selection time frame. This trader got one there and using advanced targeting again, got stopped out for a reasonable one. That's uh, probably what one, two, three, maybe five to one. So if you're getting five to one trades out of it, then you're happy. Five full losers covered by one winner. Right, so uh, another nice trade uh, for the week for this trader. So you can see why they're getting pretty close to uh, meeting the 6% uh, uh, hurdle for uh, their evaluation account on the funded account program. All right, so GBP NZD also respecting that support level. So last week, a bullish candle, strong bullish candle, uh, but very much respecting that support level on that time frame. And you can see we had a breakdown in sequentiality of cyclicity, <coughs> excuse me, uh, here on the daily time frame. So remember that wave, even though it's longer, it is not an impulse wave. That over there is an open. So all of the closes in this wave were inside this support level. Uh, so we treat that support level as having been respected. Uh, so nothing for us to do there. Oh, by the way, if you were trading an overlay on this, and that would be a valid gamma, uh, you would have entered once that low was ringed and that's probably hit take profit already. So uh, just as a, a quick aside, on a daily overlay, actually a weekly selection time frame. Right, moving on to our other crosses, CAD Swiss, nothing doing here. Uh, you can see last week was just a bullish inside candle, uh, just going sideways, not one of the pairs we've been trading. And again, I reiterate how important it is to stay away from pairs or trading instruments where the conditions are not appropriate. Aussie Swiss, likewise, even though, you know, we've had these outside closes over here, uh, these, you can see it hasn't been doing much. Preceding week, giving us that bearish candle last week, an inverted hammer. So uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's still closed outside of the channel, uh, but not really giving us much. And you can actually see how the cyclicity has broken down on the daily time frame. I'm probably repeating myself from last week, but note really that we had, uh, we, we in fact had a, a bearish uh, phase two, bullish phase two, because there was no higher close. Then we had a bearish phase one, bullish phase two, and uh, I know that quite a few folks also, once that high was ringed, uh, shorted this with a, um, an, a bearish overlay, gamma overlay, and you'd still be in that. So remember, at the end of today, uh, you would need to be, if you haven't hit your take profit by the end of today, uh, then you manage the trade. And that may well include taking the profit off the table. Okay, so you guys know how to trade that. Right, Aussie CAD, uh, again, similar picture, that high test resistance level being met, even though all of these closes are just hovering uh, on top of the support level, uh, nothing really for us to be able to do there. You can see that high test though here on the daily time frame looks like this with an outside close, but then the market pulled straight back inside and closed back again at the end of Wednesday. Uh, so I don't think we got any valid signals on this one. Certainly I'm not seeing, no, there weren't any trades taken. So um, there are much better uh, instruments to trade uh, as we've already seen. So that's why we've stayed away from these. Right, Aussie Kiwi, uh, the best of the lot basically, where you can see that last week we had a bullish impulse candle outside of the channel. Okay, it's not a valid W pattern, but uh, it's, a, it's a class three in fact. So um, if you are, you know, you, you shouldn't be happy with that if you're a pattern trader, but if you're just a channel trader, then you have been trading this. So uh, here would have been the setup for a bullish uh, daily impulse. And this one just hit take profit last week, Tuesday, I think it was. So those of you who took that and use the standard targeting, you've hit your take profit. If you're using advanced targeting, then you probably, you're probably still waiting for that threshold to be met, which is a close above it, uh, in which case you're just sitting at break even waiting for that to go further. So this can in fact, one, two, three, four, five, no, this is right. At the end of today, assuming that the trade survives, uh, we'll be able to trail the stop to break even. All right, so just uh, bear that in mind for those of you who uh, are doing advanced targeting on that. Right, the last two of our currency pairs, here's Kiwi Swiss, Last week, inside, inverted hammer, high test, not really interesting at all. And you can see on the daily time frame, it's really just messy cyclicity. So one that we've stayed away from completely. And likewise on QE CAD, 
weekly time frame, that bearish candle just showing some whipsaw. Uh, here on daily, it does mean that it's come down to test the support level of our daily HTC channel. Uh, so let's wait and see. If we get a bearish breakout on this, uh, then we would potentially be looking to trade this pair using the daily time frame or selection time frame and uh, executing on the lower intraday time frames. Right, so moving on to gold, uh, doing nothing at the moment. Not interested, we've stayed away from it. Uh, likewise, here on the, uh, this is the Dow Jones last week, no real interesting action at all. Uh, just that hammer candle. Uh, it's, a, it's a weak bearish cyclicity on the daily time frame, which overall is actually quite bullish. So um, it basically means that we're in a bearish retracement on a higher time frame from a technical perspective. That's not meant to be a predictive statement though, as always. Uh, and similar pictures on the, uh, the other indices. So here's the S&P. This one is strong though. This is a valid class, uh, well, it was a class four W pattern. It's turning into a class one M pattern as soon as this high is ringed. Uh, so bear that in mind uh, for those folks who want to uh, trade the indices using uh, the lower time frame strategy. So again, just make sure that you get the a valid pattern on the execution time frame as well before you take that. Uh, and similarly on the NASDAQ, there's the weekly picture. Here's the daily picture uh, where you can see that it's actually one single continuous bearish wave. Uh, and it's still inside of the channel. And unfortunately it's also a class three on the selection time frame. So the only one really that's tradable is S&P from a technical perspective. Okay, so let's have a look at oil uh, last week. Also not doing that much coming down slightly. We're hovering ar ar around the hundred dollar mark uh, on the UK oil, which is uh, not exactly the same price as you're gonna get on WTI, uh, but the picture will look the same. So. Uh, we've, we've actually, we're just sitting on our hands when it comes to, to oil at the moment, despite the fact that it's done very well for us in the past. Uh, there's nothing for us to do at the moment. If you look at the daily time frame, uh, we've got this class three M pattern at the moment. Uh, it's a pretty fight it didn't make a higher height because it would then give us a, a class two M pattern. But in any case, uh, it is inside of the channel and it's not that far from that support level either. So not doing anything with that. Bitcoin last week, bit of a bearish week, uh, showing weak bullish cyclicity still at the moment. So this is a weak class four M pattern. Uh, daily time frame, uh, you can see really last week, it's, it was just a bearish week overall inside the channel. No trades for us. We, we've stayed away from it uh, in terms of our trading strategies. And then last but not least, uh, the US treasuries, you can see that uh, last week gave us yet another bearish impulse candle in this impulse wave in this bearish trend on the weekly time frame. So this continues to be one of the best uh, instruments that we've got going at the moment. Uh, this trade is not trading it, uh, unfortunately, but it really has been good for us. The trade that we got in here on the hybrid is in fact still going, folks, which is absolutely awesome. Just using the two five step rule. So that's still going. Uh, then for anybody who wanted to trade a daily impulse on this, uh, there you have it. It's, um, uh, doesn't look like it should be a break even. One, two, three, four, five. So, oh yeah, of course, with a two five step rule on Friday, we were able to trail the stop to break even on this one already. Uh, so that's on daily impulse. And it looks like well, it's getting quite close to the take profit for standard targeting. Uh, otherwise, close to the threshold for advanced targeting. Uh, also gave us a setup uh, on the H4 time frame, as you can see here. A couple of setups, in fact. <clears throat> the first one was uh, this may have been a hybrid uh, with that deep target uh, for a standard target. Uh, didn't quite get there, but likewise, you know, if it, if it didn't get stopped out, then it's still going strong. But if you trailed the stop along the way, you would have still taken a nice two and a half to one. A reward to risk on that one and then got a subsequent setup over here with a, a class 3m pattern uh, i think it was uh, so that one you'd be in and uh, you'd uh, certainly be have been at break even for quite some time so uh, another very nice one if you're waiting for take profit on this one then actually that would have been hit this morning 
Uh, so well done to you folks who have been trading this. Right, folks, well, that's it uh, from me. Those are all the instruments that we typically look at in our market review. So if you've got any questions, as always, please do pop them into the comments below. I answer each and every one of them. Uh, and as always, if you're enjoying our material, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you are interested in getting access to uh, some big news that's coming out, uh, we are going to have a limited window of opportunity for people to get free access to uh, some uh, interactive training, a training workshop, then uh, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel uh, because if you're not subscribed, you won't know about it. If you don't hit that notify bell either, you're uh, not necessarily going to know about it in time. So please make sure you do that. All right, folks, uh, have a fantastic week's trading. I hope it's just as profitable this week as it was uh, last week. Uh, and I'll chat to you all through the week. Bye for now.